Having covered a lot of uh, non-interacting systems uh, such as classical ideal gas, collection of spins, etc., uh, we have also looked at interacting systems where uh, there are pairwise uh, interaction either between the molecules of the gas or between the spins um, at uh, neighboring distances. Uh, let us come to some uh, special topics uh, which are um, usually not taught as a part of the statistical mechanics course, but then uh, I thought that this could be an interesting uh, you know introduction uh, to the black hole thermodynamics. Uh, now, this would be kept really at uh, a beginner's level and uh, will not try to go into any deep uh, of this topic because black hole is a very vast topic and uh, very large amount of work has been done. We just uh, concentrate on a very small uh, narrow uh, topic of this called as a, the thermodynamics of the black holes. And uh, it is mainly uh, based on these paper by Bekenstein that to a uh, small part of the paper of uh, Bekenstein which is called Black Holes and Entropy uh, which was published uh, in 1973 in Physical Review D. And uh, you can also see this YouTube uh, lecture uh, by uh, Dr. Bibhash Maji uh, who has this, uh, this talk is actually based on these um, paper that you see there. Uh, so, we will just uh, cover very basics of uh, black holes and uh, its thermodynamic properties and uh, we will not uh, really go into the details or derivations uh, the mathematics will be kept to the minimal and uh, let us see how much we can uh, do with that. Uh, so, uh, the field of study of black holes is called as astrophysics and uh, astrophysics is a very vast subject with uh, various aspects not only of black holes, but other uh, uh, gravitational bodies are uh, dealt with. And um, so, what are black holes? These are uh, the end phase of the massive stars uh, okay, which are uh, really heavy, they are excessively heavy to be supported under gravity. We have seen uh, some uh, kind of stars which are called as a white dwarf stars which are very old and um, they are uh, left with the ionized helium gas which we have actually studied as a uh, application of uh, degenerate Fermi systems um, and that could also be a special topic in, in any case we have derived the mass of the sun and so on or, or mass of the star and how it is related to the mass of the sun. Uh, and uh, these uh, black holes are similar objects, they are very heavy and uh, to be supported under gravity and uh, the mass actually uh, continues to accumulate at the center and uh, in doing so, it becomes so massive that the escape velocity of matter which is given by root over 2 gmr um, and uh, that reaches the speed of light because this m keeps increasing. And uh, when it does, then um, the matter, uh, you know, or rather, rather light cannot come out or matter cannot come out uh, either. Uh, and uh, so, uh, it is called as a black hole. And uh, when this happens, the collapsing matter uh, cannot communicate any information uh, to the outside world. So, that is outside the black hole. So, this is a shadow of uh, a black hole uh, taken by this event horizon telescope. So, what happens is that uh, if you have a, a black hole like this uh, and uh, the light actually because it is so massive that the light actually bends around it and uh, then a uh, camera is kept in this uh, position and you image it and this is how the uh, image of the black hole looks like. Um, and uh, so, the radius and the mass of uh, the black holes, they obey this relation r equal to g into uh, 2 m by c square, uh, g is a, a gravitational constant which has a value, let me just write down the value. So, g is equal to um, 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 uh, centimeter cube by second square and c is of course, the speed of light which is 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second. Uh, so, this is 6.67. Okay. So, uh, those are the values and uh, that is the radius and the mass relationship between um, of the black hole and um, 
So uh, Hawking actually combined quantum mechanics and general theory of relativity uh, uh, to calculate the emission of radiation from the black hole. Uh, we have said that uh, the black holes, uh, there is no information that comes out. So how is this uh, um, the information or the radiation that comes out from black hole? In fact, uh, this is the quantum mechanical idea. Uh, it is based on uh, uh, basically the, the tunneling uh, that you know that a particle even if it sees um, a barrier which is uh, more than the energy of the particle, it can still tunnel as a wave and uh, so having said that uh, nothing comes uh, can come out of the black hole. Uh, so the Hawking radiation is really the quantum mechanical the tunneling phenomena occurring at the surface of the black hole. So, uh, Hawking found that uh, the black holes emit uh, perfect black body radiation with a temperature which is given by all these uh, things which is h cross c cube divided by 8 pi g m uh, k and uh, of course this uh, uh, the energy momentum or the energy and uh, uh, mass relationship is given by e equal to mc square. So, you see that uh, t is really uh, uh, proportional to the 1 over e. Uh, in this particular case and uh, but uh, nevertheless what is important here is that uh, there is a concept of temperature that is coming out of the black holes and uh, this uh, uh, makes one to suspect that there is a close relationship uh, between these uh, black holes and the thermodynamics that we have learnt uh, or the properties of the black hole and thermodynamics uh, that is there are entropy, specific heat and so on and so forth. Uh, and the temperature of the black holes uh, is about uh, 20 nano Kelvin and uh, the temperature actually of free space is uh, 2.73 Kelvin. So, you see this is like uh, nearly 10 to the power uh, 9 times larger. So, the surroundings have uh, really large temperature which are several billion times larger and uh, so uh, nevertheless because of this uh, property that it has a temperature it behaves uh, like a thermodynamic body and should obey uh, the laws of thermodynamics. In fact, it uh, obeys all uh, four laws of thermodynamics, we will not go into details on that uh, and we will only concentrate on second law towards the end. And um, But of course, uh, the energy conservation which is the first law and this uh, zeroth law is uh, uh, the uh, definition of temperature and uh, even the third law uh, is uh, that it uh, sort of it takes infinite steps to actually uh, go to um, absolute zero that all those things are uh, obeyed as well. So, we were saying that uh, uh, these uh, they obey uh, black body radiation like formula. So, this Hawking radiation uh, is actually thermal that is what it means and uh, what we have learnt uh, in elementary quantum mechanics is this called as a Planck's uh, distribution or rather this is a black body radiation. So, it is a intensity or the power density that is plotted on the y axis versus the wavelength in nanometer is plotted in the x axis and as uh, one sees that um, at uh, you know uh, at large temperatures you have uh, these things to peak. Um, the, the plots to peak in some visible region and as you uh, decrease temperature the plot becomes flatter and flatter and this is uh, what was found earlier that uh, as you heat up a metallic object then uh, the uh, emission of radiation changes frequency from uh, you know the blue to the uh, blue to the red range as you see that uh, uh, the peak of the uh, largest one that is uh, corresponding to 6000 Kelvin, this is the 6000 Kelvin is truly in the blue side whereas, uh, as uh, you come to something around 4000 Kelvin it has shifted towards the red side and so on. So, this is uh, the Planck's radiation law, this is very familiar to everyone who started uh, uh, studying you know quantum physics or this uh, how this thing was. Uh, um, resolved was that there was Wien's law and there is Rallagin's law both could not predict this uh, upturn of this radiation intensity and Planck came and fixed it and later on it is found that the photons actually obey the Bose-Einstein condensation which is what we have studied in details. And um, so, uh, emission of this Hawking radiation can be visualized in this fashion that it is basically that there is a black hole and there is uh, things coming out of the surface, this uh, radiation is shown by these uh, 
yellow dots and this taken from this uh, YouTube uh, video. Uh, this is a, a sort of video for uh, understanding black holes for the beginners. And um, it's just that a little uh, different um, uh, thing happens here because the notion of temperature is a little different for the black holes and which is what we are going to you know emphasize uh, here. Uh, so you see that there are these uh, smaller black holes they emit uh, these kind of uh, uh, distribution or the intensity versus wavelength that looks like uh, the one that is shown there and uh, it is slightly um, invisible these blue ones which are you see that there are uh, really uh, this uh, kind of flatter distribution and peaking at uh, very large wavelength or uh, small frequencies. So, uh, the bigger black holes emit lower frequency light and uh, less light overall. Uh, again, this is from the same uh, YouTube, this is just a snapshot of uh, uh, this uh, the black hole uh, radiation intensity of the Hawking radiation that comes out. So, as I said that uh, the notion of temperature is different in black holes thus uh, in spite of you know obeying the laws of thermodynamics they should have uh, distinct features ok. And how is it different? How is the, uh, the notion of temperature different in black holes than ordinary thermodynamic bodies? We find that when energy is added it gets cooler ok and um, further it hits up by emitting Hawking radiation that usually does not happen to normal thermodynamic bodies when you uh, give energies the internal energy increases and uh, internal energy being a sole function of temperature the temperature increases but here uh, something uh, reverse happens and this has uh, consequences in having a negative specific heat is which we will see uh, later. And um, so, uh, if you give energy it uh, cools and when it emits radiation it gets hotter and that is something that is uh, counterintuitive but that is what happens. Um, in fact, uh, as I said that uh, this tells you that if it happens that you give uh, energy and uh, the system becomes cooler. Um, that is uh, not very usual, but then one can actually uh, get it in the lab or rather achieve it in the lab. If you take an insulated bottle of uh, ice cold water and that uh, as you put in energy it gets uh, cooler. In any case that is not uh, a stable system and uh, this leads to the instability of the black holes as well. Uh, however, uh, we uh, will show that this is actually a property of the Schwarzschild black holes but there are other kinds of black holes which do not show these uh, property of negative uh, specific heat ok. So, uh, let us come to entropy which is uh, known to be a very important uh, thermodynamic quantity and uh, we know left to itself any system would try to achieve um, the state of maximum entropy. And uh, Bekenstein inferred uh, that the entropy of the black hole is proportional to uh, entropy is proportional to uh, the area of the black holes ok. So, uh, the entropy goes as the area uh, that is an important finding and uh, the entropy is known to be uh, an increasing quantity uh, of course, at best it does not change for completely reversible processes where delta s is equal to 0. But in general the area of the black holes should increase uh, to have consistency with the notion of entropy ok. So, um, how do we reconcile that there is an entropy of the black holes and uh, uh, so uh, let me uh, you know put it this way that uh, suppose we have a mass just outside the black hole which has an entropy. So, uh, there is a positive entropy there of that mass and suppose the mass is sucked in uh, inside the black hole and then there is no information that comes out then it will look like that for outside region. Uh, the entropy would go down, but the entropy the total entropy does not go down in fact, it increases because the black hole has it kind of expands or rather the area of the black hole increases. In this connection uh, there is uh, a quantity called as a information entropy is called as a Shannon entropy as well. We have nevertheless we have looked at these uh, formula uh, in a sense that this pi uh, denoted uh, you know the probability of the, uh, the system to be found in some energy level and so on. Uh, it poses of course, an additional concern 
Um, so uh, we pose the question that we have just stated or rather the thing that we have explained, uh, we sort of uh, put it in slightly different terms. Since everything goes inside the black hole, um, it gets absorbed and it never comes out. So the entropy actually denotes the lack of knowledge or inaccessible information about the internal configuration that is there inside the black hole. Okay? So uh, this uh, entropy is actually uh, the lack of knowledge or uh, inaccessible information. Uh, so uh, what I said is that if there is any mass that sucked inside a black hole and since we would know nothing about it later once it is inside, uh, it may seem that the entropy decreases for the region outside the black hole. Uh, thus, uh, to be consistent, the area has to increase, which uh, as I said is proportional to entropy. Okay? So, it is the area of the black hole that is a very important parameter in the discussion of these uh, thermodynamics. So, we uh, have uh, different uh, kinds of uh, black holes. Uh, they are called Schwarzschild black holes, which are stationary. Uh, they are not moving and rather they uh, do not evolve and they only have mass. Uh, we have Kerr black holes which are spinning, they are not stationary, they are spinning and they have mass and angular momentum and uh, there are Carr Newman black holes which are uh, spinning, charged and so they have mass, uh, angular momentum and charge as well. Uh, we will just talk about this uh, Kerr black holes. That is, uh, we will just talk about them to be having angular momentum and mass, but no charge. So, aim is to uh, establish a correspondence between uh, the thermodynamics and uh, properties of uh, black holes. And uh, in particular, we want to uh, have a generalization of the second law of uh, thermodynamics applicable to the black holes. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, start a little bit of uh, you know writing formulas and a bit of calculation, but nothing would be done uh, in a rigorous way. Uh, it will all be told that uh, this is really the thing happens and we just want uh, uh, the combination of uh, the first and second law and uh, to show that how that gets generalized or uh, what are the corresponding quantities that we are aware of in usual thermodynamics either say for a gas or for another for a system uh, of particles and uh, how that gets generalized to this black uh, black bodies. So, we write uh, combining first and second law of thermodynamics. So, this is uh, du equal to uh, Tds minus Pdv this is all well known and uh, we have to have a, a correspondence and as we have said a number of times uh, to establish the correspondence, um, the area of the black hole would uh, play a, um, uh, an important role and uh, when we talk about area, we talk about a matrix. Um, or rather this is the called as the area matrix uh, which is written as ds square and uh, this is say in um, you know uh, sort of in uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates can be written as c square dt square plus uh, dx square plus dy square plus dz square um, and uh, in uh, spherical polar coordinates it is written as c square dt square plus uh, dr square plus uh, r square d theta square plus uh, r square sin square theta d phi square. Okay. So, that is the area matrix. Um, in the curved uh, coordinate system, uh, so basically we are talking about space time to be curved. Um, and uh, there we uh, write this down as uh, uh, in notational uh, this thing is in terms of this matrix. Uh, so, it is like a dx mu uh, and a dx nu and um, this can be expanded 
or written a little more uh, clearly as uh, g t t uh, d t square that is the, uh, the time part and then there is a 2 uh, g t phi um, d t d phi that is the uh, cross term and then there are these g r r uh, d r square and plus uh, r square and the angular d uh, omega square. So, this is the general form of the matrix and uh, this uh, matrix uh, has a singularity uh, where we have a g r r that goes to infinity. Okay. So, the singularity uh, is defined uh, by this g r r going to infinity and if you actually look at it uh, this also has a singularity at r equal to 0 uh, this uh, one in the flat uh, uh, space time. So, this uh, is uh, a singularity and this singularity actually defines a horizon. Okay. So, what we do is that we calculate uh, 1 by g r r equal to 0 and uh, from this condition one gets uh, uh, that is the singularity of this, uh, this quantity uh, one gets uh, r plus and minus and this r plus is actually greater than r minus and um, uh, in this particular case, we will uh, write it uh, the expressions for r plus minus without any uh, sort of proof. So, r plus minus uh, for this uh, curve black hole comes out to be m plus minus root over of uh, m square minus uh, a square, we write that without a proof, uh, where a is nothing but j over m that is the you know uh, the angular momentum divided by the mass and uh, if you want uh, a little more uh, you know relation that is the irreducible uh, mass of this uh, black hole that uh, this black hole is uh, given by the mass is given by a by uh, 16 uh, whole to the power half and uh, when you actually uh, calculate the, um, so in fact a family of black holes if you want to consider then um, you have to uh, have the energy of the black hole which is equal to uh, sum over a uh, over 16. Uh, so, there is a pi there which I forgot there is 16 pi and whole to the power half and so that is equal to really um, uh, sum over this and uh, m square whole to the power half and not, uh, not simply uh, sum over uh, m. Okay. Uh, so, e is not equal to which means that this is not equal to the e, but rather you have to get this uh, sum over all these uh, family of uh, black holes and, and then you have to do a square of the mass. Anyway, that is not very important here. What is important is that uh, the we get the horizon radius which is uh, given by this r plus minus. In fact, uh, the horizon radius is uh, uh, given by r plus because r minus uh, stays outside. Okay. So, r minus is inside. So, you are actually uh, approaching the black hole from outside and you will first encounter this uh, you know the r plus which is related to the radius of the horizon. So, we have uh, this, this is the horizon which has a radius which is r plus, r plus is given by m plus uh, root over of m square minus a square. If you have a charge there as well then you have a minus q square inside the square root and uh, a as we have said that this is related to the angular momentum which is equal to uh, m. So, that tells you that r plus that is the horizon radius is a function of, of m and a uh, which means uh, or m and j. Okay. So, this is a function of a and j 
so the uh, area which is uh, like uh, going as r plus square, so the area is a function of uh, j and m or uh, we can also say it is a function of a and m because uh, this is related to um, uh, j is related to a by this relation a equal to j by m. Okay. And this is equivalent to the fact that the internal energy is proportional to uh, the S and V that is the entropy and, uh, and uh, this uh, volume. And uh, so, if you uh, do a differential of the area, so this becomes a function of dm plus it becomes a function of dA and these coefficients um, you know need to be fixed. Okay. So, this is the thing that we have in hand and we will not derive anything, we will simply write down these coefficients and uh, such that we get a you know a look alike of the second law or rather combining the first and second law of thermodynamics. This is what we want that this uh, we need to have an uh, equation similar to this for the black hole uh, and establish a correspondence between various terms. Okay. So, uh, for the car black holes So, we have this uh, d m, we just uh, you know take uh, m on the other side and write it as uh, some theta and some d alpha, where alpha is simply a over 4 pi. Okay. So, we just write a to alpha equal to a over 4 pi, where uh, it is almost the area accepting that is divided by 4 pi and some omega d j. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, like the d u the internal uh, energy and this is like the T d s. Uh, we have said that this uh, entropy is proportional to the area and so, it is proportional to alpha and this looks like a minus p d v. Uh, so, uh, what we have is that this quantity is uh, in terms of the black hole parameters is r plus minus r minus by 4 alpha and omega is equal to a over alpha. Okay. And so, this is basically the uh, thing that we are uh, looking for rather the generalization of this uh, law d u equal to T d s minus p d v and uh, these are uh, various terms that so, mass is like energy with of course, uh, there is a c square that is uh, c equal to 1 is taken and uh, this is a TDS. Uh, so, this uh, d alpha is, uh, is proportional to ds and this theta is proportional to t. It is not uh, equal to t, but there are some factors of s that are there embedded here. We do not want to go into details on, on those uh, correspondence, but just want to show that uh, this relation is uh, similar to the relation that we have uh, discussed several times um, while we talked about thermodynamics with these uh, theta equal to uh, you know r plus minus r minus which are the two uh, radii that come out uh, because of these uh, the g r r uh, to be a divergent quantity. Uh, so, that happens at the horizon or the surface of the horizon and, and this happens because um, everything is allowed to go inside the black hole, but nothing is allowed to come out. So, that, that uh, causes a singularity and so on. So, uh, if you are really talking about a Schwarzschild black hole, we have shown this earlier as well that T is uh, proportional to 1 over m and this is called as a Hawking temperature. We have written that earlier as uh, uh, T of h if you go here. So, this expression that you see it is uh, T uh, is going as uh, 1 over m and that means it goes as 1 over uh, the energy. So, it goes as 1 over energy. Uh, so, the, that means the d e d t um, that is negative 
So that tells that for this uh, Schwarzschild uh, black holes where it only depends on the mass uh, and uh, the temperature only depends on the mass and that makes the uh, specific heat to be negative and makes this black hole to be um, you know uh, unstable. But of course, uh, with uh, the spinning uh, degree of freedom that is J and with charge uh, that does not happen. We do not go into the details, but uh, keep it only um, at the beginners level in order uh, for you to understand that there is uh, a term uh, which is uh, or rather this equation uh, of uh, the combining the first and second law has an analog in the or in case of the black body where uh, various parameters uh, that uh, that something which is related to temperature is uh, is given by this r plus minus r minus divided by 4 alpha alpha is uh, again uh, proportional to a and so on and then this omega that you see here which is uh, similar to or analogous to uh, minus of p and that is nothing but uh, the j over a um, or this angular momentum uh, divided by the area and so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, we stop with this um, introduction, uh, very introductory, very rudimentary. We do not go into details, we do not derive anything, but uh, we uh, uh, plan to do it this way because uh, this is really for the beginners. Let me now uh, summarize of all the topics that are covered throughout the course of statistical physics of interacting and non-interacting or rather non-interacting and interacting systems because we have started with the non-interacting systems. So, we have talked about the introductory part and how statistical mechanics uh, really plays an important role in uh, understanding of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics um, uh, suffers uh, from the fact that it has very few observables and it only gives you a macroscopic dis uh, description of the system in terms of uh, pressure, volume and temperature. And um, after that we have uh, talked about uh, ensembles and how these uh, picture of replicating the system to very large number of systems with them um, you know being able to uh, exchange energy come to an equilibrium or exchange both energy and number of particles to come to an equilibrium. Uh, namely the canonical and the grand canonical ensembles, uh, how that shaped up our uh, understanding of systems and that allows us to do a statistical analysis of, uh, of our system. It is very important to understand that the statistical analysis can only be done when one has very large number of systems and uh, it is not one or two uh, class size that we are talking about. We are talking about a large class size such that an average, a uh, mean, a variance, etc. Uh, they can uh, be defined. Okay. Uh, we have uh, done applications of the ensemble theory, calculated the partition function of the uh, classical ideal gas, paramagnetic system, um, then a system of harmonic oscillator, oscillators which uh, actually talks about or rather models solid uh, where you know the the ions or the atoms are connected by springs and they vibrate uh, such as uh, they do in uh, coupled oscillators and so on. Uh, we have gone into quantum statistics and have learned a general way of handling things. We have talked about Gibbs paradox and how Gibbs paradox was actually an unknown thing in classical statmec and how that got uh, completely rectified, the paradox is removed as you take into account the indistinguishability of particles which is the main um, message of quantum statistics. As an example, we have talked about uh, ideal Bose gas uh, and we have talked about the applications of the non-interacting Bose gas. There we have mainly uh, we have done the uh, this Bose-Einstein condensation. We have also done uh, say for example, this Planck's radiation formula, black body radiation and so on and so forth. Uh, we have talked about uh, ideal Fermi gases, uh, properties of uh, highly degenerate Fermi systems and have learned how to handle metals, different properties of metals, what is the notion of Fermi temperature, what is the notion of uh, Fermi wave vector and so on, chemical potential and how all these things are defined and how they uh, 
uh, sort of how uh, such systems are handled uh, where there is a Pauli's exclusion principle uh, and indistinguishability they are taken into account uh, in various situations. Uh, the special topics is actually uh, talked about now where we have uh, talked about the black hole uh, thermodynamics a little bit in very short. Uh, we have also talked about interacting systems and uh, in that connection we have uh, talked about some uh, really the uh, exact solutions of Ising model such as um, the transfer matrix method or um, you know there are uh, these renormalization group and uh, so on. And we have also done um, uh, this uh, more than one dimension that is two and three dimension Ising model by using uh, these mean field theory. And in general we have talked about phase transitions and uh, as a part of this course we have also learned how to um, uh, apply two um, uh, methods which are uh, very important in the context of interacting systems because uh, in interacting systems one cannot write down the partition function in a closed form always as it is uh, done for the non-interacting systems. So, there are new methods and techniques that need to be uh, discussed and in this connection we have done apart from these uh, 1D Ising model techniques we have also done uh, Bethe ansatz for uh, uh, this is we have specialized it for the spin systems, but it is actually in general it is um, sort of applicable to other systems as well. And uh, also we have uh, uh, talked about the linked cluster expansion which is really the high temperature series expansion and uh, have calculated at least at some uh, order uh, what is the correction to the classical ideal gas. So, this is a, a complete uh, sort of set of lectures for uh, any um, undergraduate course even at the masters level uh, for uh, the statistical mechanics and uh, there will be um, a number of tutorials or the assignments that you have to uh, do and um, there are uh, uh, various concepts that are involved which you need to learn. As I said there are a number of books that are important and um, uh, the most important one is uh, uh, this Pathria, uh, the statistical mechanics by Pathria, but there are other books which have been mentioned earlier and uh, this is a book by Macquarie and uh, other uh, books uh, which all I mean you can refer to that. In fact, a large uh, number of things are done uh, in the same line as Pathria. I have tried to you know fill in more details and more uh, conceptual uh, notions and also uh, there will be um, uh, exercises or assignment problems uh, so that uh, one knows how to apply these concepts and ideas uh, to real problems. We will stop here. Thank you very much.